We're going to talk about Power Platform, specifically Power Apps Component Library. So who am I? I'm David Warner. Uh, I do some stuff in the community. We're inquisitive. Thanks for watching. So what is the component libraries I talk about? Well, uh, like a Jedi, you're going to master reusability, you will. I, that didn't sound anything like Yoda. But you're going to like a Jedi with component libraries, right? You're going to master reusability. That's the whole point. So today we're going to talk about what are component libraries. Uh, we're going to see a use case of a Jedi Council request app, a little simple thing, uh, using an About Us page and how you could use a component library, say, for example, uh, in that particular use case. And then leveling up, that's what's next from Pat on to Jedi Master with advanced component libraries. So first, what exactly is a component library? Well, uh, components are obviously reusable little components or modules that you can create within Power Apps that can be used within your Power App and multiple screens, and that way you're not having to recreate every single thing every single time. A component library allows you to couple or group a number of components into one entity or module that can be used in many apps and then as you update the component library, those apps get alerted that a change has occurred. So now you've got this one centralized repository that you can access from all your apps. And your app makers can reference that and use it. And when you need to update it, they magically get the updates without having to uh, go into each and every app and change each and every instance of where it was used, right? Pretty cool. Very useful. Don't know how heavily used it is, but it is extremely, extremely powerful. So let's talk about our use case. We're going to create a Jedi Council request app, and it is going to have an About Us page. Uh, we want a couple of things. We want there to be a couple of customizable uh, properties within the About Us page, so things like the app name and the app version. That makes sense. It's going to be different from each app to app. Uh, and that way, within the app, you can provide those properties that define what your app name is, what your app version is. But then maybe we want some global properties that are associated to uh, the app on the About Us page. So things like legal or disclaimers, you know, global values, stuff like that. Okay, so we want to make sure that we, we, we have that ready uh, and all that stuff can be populated. So let's take a quick look at how we're going to do that. Joe, this is a quick glimpse of those dynamic properties. So you can see here, I've highlighted some custom properties that I've created within my component. We'll go and see this live in a moment, but just shows you where I'm kind of connecting these properties. These are input properties, they're just text, right? So uh, on the app side, when it inherits this component library, which is what you're looking at, it can make a change to the about, and you see it says sample app there and app name on the right. Uh, and then as I go through, I can adjust the app version information associates to the custom property for app version. And of course, any known issues we want to potentially share about that particular app. So these are things that are configurable on the app side. Now on the component side, uh, we've got things that are kind of hard coded from the component developer or the component maker. So of course, you know, I mean, it's natural. We can't be responsible for, you know, damages by Sith Lords and Death Star accidents or Imperial takeovers, right? Lightsaber burns and all that need to be reported to HR. That's normal stuff, right? And of course, if you feel a disturbance in the force, it's a feature, not a bug, right? Uh, but we also want to be able to identify current updates. And so that's something that we're going to update on the component side, component library side, and push over onto the app side. So enough talking, let's see what this looks like in action. So I'm gonna go over here into my Power Apps environment and I'm at make.powerapps.com and you're gonna find component libraries here on the left, right? And if you don't, you can always get to them and you can go to uh, discover all and that'll show you component libraries, but I have mine pinned uh, and it makes it super easy because I am a big fan of component libraries. So uh, I've got my Jedi Council component library here ready to go. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to edit that. And as we showed in the uh, as we showed in the slides, there are properties associated to that uh, that I can adjust and have the app adjust each time, right? So as it loads here, we're going to see that information is there. So again, about sample app. If I click on that, I'm pulling in the app name right, which is coming uh, if I click on my component. Um, if I click on that and I click on the component, we can see those custom properties right over here. And so that app name is what is associated right up here. Uh, and of course, I've clicked off it, so you, you don't see it on the side, but that's what clicks over to that property in 
uh, inside of my component library. Now, um, these are all properties that you can adjust right now. The legal disclaimer are things that I'm setting in the actual component library. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with components, uh, this is obviously just a little page you can associate and adjust. I'm making it very simple. Um, you also have a screens feature here. Now, it's important to note that when you're within a component or a component library, uh, screens is just for testing, right? So if I wanted to come over to screens and I wanted to insert my component, Right, I've got it available here, and I can do that. I could drop it onto my screen. But as I'm doing that here within the scope of the component or the component library, this is really just for testing. Right, This screen does not exist in the app when you imp uh, import it uh, and stuff like that. So uh, it's important to know that that's really just there for, for testing. All the work that you do is mostly here on the component side. And you can have more than one component. Right, This is a component library, so I could include multiple components here. We're going to focus just on the about us for right now. So let's move over to an app that I've set up to, to consume that. All right, so I've got my Jedi Council requests. Uh, I've just wired up a quick little um, uh, a quick little information button down here, right? When I click on it using the Alt key, I'm not within play, obviously, so I can I can have it show up and, and hide as I want. What I've done uh, is I've associated uh, to those properties that are specific to my app, just values over here, right? So we could make this dynamic, uh, but for now I've just hard coded in Jedi Council request. That's what it is, uh, version 1.55, and no known issues, right? Now you may be saying, well, wait a second, how did you even get the component in there? I preset it up for time, um, but if you are like, hey, where do I get my components? Uh, you can come over to the insert tab on the left. And the documentation needs to be updated a little bit for this. Uh, it used to show that you would import it a different way, but the way you get to it is via these icons right there. One is for refreshing, which we'll see live in a moment, and one is for importing. So if I were to click the little get more components button, uh, it brings in the ability, and I'll refresh this, and I don't know why it's not, showing me it should be showing me my component um something's kind of janky right now it's literally just working and it would show and you'd be able to import it uh so it could be that i i need to refresh this or something um but i've already imported it right and you can see that right here and that's how you would typically get it in is utilizing that get more components um all right now uh the thing is, is that I'm updating all that and I want to uh, now come in and update a global update, right? So, uh, for example, if I'm on the corporate side and we've got a global update that needs to be imported into the uh, application, how would we do that, right? So, let's go back over to our component library and I'm doing these in two different uh, browser sessions just because that way there's not conflict with the global or with the uh, client side variables and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to come into to current updates and I'm just going to paste in uh, some requests, right? So we've had a requests from everybody around the galaxy for dark mode. I mean, really dark, dark mode in a Jedi app, it seems a little bit you know, not appropriate. So we're just going to say, despite countless requests from users across the galaxy for dark mode, we regret to inform you that this will not be implemented because really, do we need to explain? Dark mode is fancy outfits and fingertip lighting, but let's be honest, none of that will help you get your work done. Stick to the light. It's Jedi approved, comes with your lighting bolts, right? So we want everybody to be aware of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this and then we're going to publish it. And when you click publish, uh, there we go, brings up the publish, and I'm just going to click publish this version. Now you could also, and should, include some documentation about what we did. We'll just say updated global alerts, or whatever we called it, publish this version, global updates, and now it's been published. If I go back to my app, there's a couple of ways in which I could get the updates for this. One of which is right here on the insert, right? So if I click on that, it should let me know, hey, yeah, see, an update has applied, right? Something has happened, uh, and I can click update. When I do that, you'll notice, bam, automatically inherits. Now, this is a very simple use case. All I've really done is updated text, but if I were using this app, or this component, I should say, in component library across a plethora uh, of apps or pinatas, right? Uh, all I need to do is update it once, and then all the makers will get the alert. Now, I knew an update occurred, and I was manually checking for a component library update. 
But you may say, what if you don't know? What if you do have a ton of apps and you don't know that an update has occurred and maybe you need to get the update or whatever the case may be? Great question. Let's see how that works. Let's come back in and let's revert this to no current updates and let's publish again. Click saving, it's saving and it's gonna publish. I'm gonna publish this version uh, and then I'm gonna come back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my app um, and I'm gonna exit. And you obviously wanna make sure you're doing good communication around your software, who's using what, you wanna have a good community of practice and stuff like that. Um, but if you just want to ensure that you're getting an alerted, you can come back in, Jedi Council requests, right, is my app. So I'm just gonna go back in and edit this. And uh, ideally, if you're editing apps and creating apps, you're probably in there fairly frequently. Now, when I come back in, what's gonna happen uh, is it's going to tell me, hey, something has changed, uh, let me say skip, and you'll notice that component library updates available, right? So I maybe didn't know an update was available, but as I'm doing my normal due diligence in business of building apps and creating cool stuff, I am getting alerted right here on what happened, what update there was, right? And now instead of having to remind myself to go in here and click the check for library updates all the time, I'm alerted to when this happened. So now I can click review. Uh, it tells me that there's been an update when it was, and of course I didn't put any information, but it would show up and I can click update and now it lets me know, hey, selected comp uh, components were successfully imported. If I click on that, bam, new, uh, no, no current updates and now has been updated, right? So a very, very simple use case here. But as you could imagine, there is a lot of power behind this because you can wrap up a ton of valuable components into a component library that do a lot of cool things. This is just a very simple about us page, uh, but a lot of very cool things and functionality that can then be used and reused across your app ecosystem. You don't reinvent the wheel every single time. You could use these for headers, for footers, for menus, for blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on and on, right? So you wanna make sure that you're using it and thinking about how you could use it. Save your precious time for the cool things that you wanna do. All right, so what is next? I, I'm a big fan of these. I'm gonna talk more about them in future sessions and on other calls. Uh, leveling up from very simple use cases like we just showed to Jedi Master, right? So think about things like theme engines. Uh, I know we've got modern theming, but you could also add additional theming engine capability to identify other properties like iconography collections or maybe logos or fonts or a variety of other things, uh, animation libraries. There's also enhanced properties. Now these are experimental and they've been experimental for a long time, but they're super powerful. So hopefully they'll go to preview and GA, but they provide extended capabilities for your component libraries to actually execute on events. So you click on a button inside of your component from the app and you can alert the app that that happened and do something with it uh, and vice versa, right? You can send uh, functions into the app uh, or in, from the app into the component library. Super, super cool, super powerful. Hopefully they will go to GA once the uh, co-pilot culture sends to, to slow down on us. It's probably what's been focusing on. So really cool features. Be on the lookout for more of this. Um, if you'd like to learn more, here's some resources, some force essentials, right? The component docs, you can get there by going to pacomp.m365.ms and the library, component library docs, uh, pacomplib.m365.ms. Thank you.